talking about clubs and going out, two our clubs and going out, I'm thinking this year, right? No, this year, this year, I'm thinking this year, the plan might be to go to Berlin to go, obviously, shock horror. <laughs> um, it might be to go to Berghain this year for New Year's Eve or for New Year's Day. That might be the plan because I remember this one article or review that I've kind of got up on the screen. I'm going to get up in a minute of their um, Club Silvestre, right, which is their kind of New Year's Day, free day banger of an event that usually starts on a Wednesday. It goes all the way until like Friday, no, Saturday morning. Yeah, sometimes, right? Absolutely insane level of raving that I really want to go to because I've never really done the free day in Bergheim anyway, where you go on like the Friday, Saturday, Sunday and you leave. No, actually, I have done it. Yeah, I have. What am I lying for? I, no, no, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I've done Saturday, Sunday, Monday, but I've never done the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday thing, which some people do. I, I don't think you could do Friday anyway because I'm, I'm sure... Bergheim opens up on a Saturday, so you have to do Panorama Bar from the Friday and then do this Bergheim from Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But still, I want to just do the New Year's, Eve, New Year's Day event. I've heard it's always amazing. The lineup is always flipping crazy. They do really good with the lineup because I think, obviously, they've got a huge roster of resident DJs, but I like that they kind of concentrate only on the residents for New Year's Day. They don't try to usually bring in any kind of external DJs to come and play, which is great because you definitely get more of a kind of club, no, kind of like a community centre, sort of like everyone knows each other feel and it definitely adds to the energy when you're in there i honestly do think that um it's been one of the most electric I, I, it's usually one of the most electric occasions when you go to panorama bar and there's loads of residents playing there and they're all hugging and high-fiving each other behind the decks it always kind of adds to the event i think overall so i definitely want to go do that for this year just to kind of be as a way to kind of mark the end hopefully of this fucking scourge of a pandemic that we're going through in a minute and just kind of personally celebrate you know being able to survive and kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel really all of it right and um again this is the power of things like resident advisor when it was at its pump this is an article published in 2020 or well, 2011 sorry in january which is called burger and sylvester um, and the, the writer here martin gold who's one of the better review better event reviews they had on there unfortunately he doesn't it seems like he works for resident advisor anymore i think the last article he published for them is like 2013 but he wrote this amazing um event review that they that i used to follow religiously back in the day when i'd go on all my kind of techno taunts and stuff and Horror stuff i always kind of check out some event reviews on there this is where i found out about robert johnson in frankfurt and a few other spots here and there but definitely a favorite of mine back in the day anyways are his event reviews and this event review for the Berghain nyd um celebrations is definitely up there some of the best so it says the following um this is any review of a party that lasts three days will necessarily omit some details i was there for almost 30 hours quite a marathon by normal standards but that still means i can't comment on more than half of what went down in the panorama burger in this year i'm certain that there were countless tales and escapades i missed out on but even without such details what i experienced at burger in total Sylvester 2020 10 was utterly outstanding um opting for what i thought was an early arrival i was greeted by an already booming main room as ben clock drove his way through his distinctive sparse fierce techno playfully into interwined with haunting echoes of underground house pulling records from the box and quite literally spanned decades yet sounded consistently and thoroughly now close relentlessly precise mixing held together a diverse ever-evolving tour through the darkest corners of electronic music upstairs in Panama bar prosumer reminded everyone that they were here to tap party bouncy bassy house set the tone for much of the weekend ahead when out and out anthems such as style councils the promised land caught everybody off guard even the quarters of panorama bars con congression jumped headfirst into the sweaty sea of grins surrounding the dj booth and you just read that right the opening couple of paragraphs and you're like you know what i need to go eventually so i need and again this is the power of words the power of these flipping event reviews is that there's no pictures you're just visualizing this stuff and usually for the most part i think yeah because i first went in 2010 but sometimes you're just reading this without knowing what this club looks like you're just kind of imagining it and hoping you replicate the feeling that that review gave you when you actually go yourself and usually nine times out of ten it definitely ends up being far better than the review you actually read um prior to going and then i think one of the best standout bits was this coach about dixon right and I think this might have been one of the first acknowledgements of how sick of a DJ was and also kind of another um, indication of where he was kind of heading in terms of his stardom. This is in 2010. So it says, yeah, um, start session two, because I think obviously the guy went back and came back again, which is what I plan to do. I'm planning when I do go to three days, I'm planning to like do 
free outfit changes go to whatever airbnb or wherever end up staying wash shower change or maybe have a bit of a kip wake up sprightly put a new outfit on head back in do the same thing i mean i want to just i want to proper enjoy the event and kind of really go out and show out and turn it into an actual party do you know what i mean all the way through a celebration and now that i'm in a space where i don't need to go out and get absolutely wrecked every time to have a good time i know that i can just do that for the first couple of sessions and then maybe get on on the third or just kind of see how it goes and play it by ear but i'm not really pressed to kind of go straight in and kind of go straight head straight to the loose i can still kind of simmer in so this is the following um Let's continue here. So it says, oh, and from this twisty um, Twilight emerged Dixon playing a challenging set that was my personal highlight of the whole weekend. A clear and sharp contrast from the harder, rougher house that Sumo had opted for, Dixon delved into the immovable shades of electronic spectrum while always remaining true to the unmistakable Innovision spirit. The progression from the timeless selections such as SSU um, to, towards um, hard, deeper house seemed organic and natural as tensions and arms soared skyward. With the final trace of the room's dignity um, running dangerously thin, David August moving, they finally pushed things over the edge and there were hugs and there were happy New Year's and there were cheers like the World Cup winning goal and there was a party and indeed the club at its finest. Moments like this simply do not happen outside of a panorama bar. Dixon called upon thoughtful house tinted electronica to bring this set to a close, handing over to Steffi amidst rapturous applause. That might be one of the best kind of recommendations you could ever find for a DJ that you might want to go see. The best, right? The best, literally the best. And that might, again, might have been an indication of where this guy was heading. Because since then, it's been just one, I mean, steep, steep, steep incline. Um, He's definitely been going up towards that. So I see that, I read that. I look at the lineup in 20, the last lineup they did, the last club notch. So the last club, Sylvester, was in 2020, obviously the beginning of the beginning of last year, uh, which was just a couple of, yeah, a few months before I went, because I went, I think, in February. And this lineup is, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty tough, right? And again, as you can see, it's split over the three days, kind of roughly. You got this Muscle Deepman, Answer Code Request, Terence Fixma, um, Face Face Hal, Baker, Fidel, Boris, and then Dr. Rubenstein all closing out the first. And that's the first night only in Pergain. And then it continues on to the second night, the Thursday, I'm assuming. Let's get it over there. Freddie K, Volvox, Samwen, Norman Nodge, um, Ed. F. Dimi, F. Dimin, however you pronounce that, Kobolsi, Len Faki, Luke Slater, and then to close out um the, the well to close to, to close out the night is Burkhan, you've got Etap Kyle playing there from two AM and then you've got the following again. So you see how it kind of breaks down, but look at the lineup man. Paramount by lineup is nice, Francois K, Steffi, Roy Perez, Jennifer Cardini, Ryan Elliott. Ryan Elliott was always a bit of a I don't know much today, it's just kind of Demeanor, demeanor but I bumped into him once with somebody when I was in the Burkhine on Paramount Bar and he did come off a bit standoffish a little bit like up his own ass but I get it you know what I mean you're, you're, you're a flipping Burkhine Paramount Bar resident um, you play sick tunes you've been in the game for a while you moved over from the States to Berlin and you settled and made a life yourself so that gas can exist but he was a little bit up his own ass you could definitely tell um, then you got Nick Hopner there Virginia God Jansen of course who I'm a big fan of Avalon Emerson Massimo Massimiliano Pagliaria, who's actually playing this weekend, I think. Is it this weekend or is it next weekend? I think in a couple of weeks at Fold for, um, um, what's it called? The King Party, a uh, crossbreed. I'm pretty sure. I definitely remember seeing his name. Cormac here playing. I don't know what the XSX floor. I've never been there. Maybe that's another room they opened up. See, because they opened up a lot of other rooms. So they've got the, whatever, however you pronounce that, salon. You've got the XSX floor. Maybe that might be the. What's the other? What's the other gay bar they've got downstairs? Like in the basement. What's it called? the uh, laboratory right or something that might be where the, these guys are playing you got Cormac Skatebad Chris Cruz Soundstream Soundstream is always brilliant in Burger and Par- in Paramount Bar for the most part Castro Nemo back to back Paramita Midland and then you've got Salon you've got loads of live acts playing more so in Salon and stuff but definitely honestly one of the far better nights to go to and allegedly the rumour is according to people in the know um indoors because obviously you can rave indoors now in berlin for the most part or in germany overall um i think the cap now is i think 2000 and you have to kind of initiate some 
um, air conditioning thing that they've got going on in clubs if you want to get it higher or something I don't know what the exact specifics are but regardless um, most or well, some clubs who have, who have the ability to are going to reopen of course the only problem is that to go to these clubs you have to obviously have a vaccine they're not permitting people to do like lateral photos or PCR tests you have to be double vaxxed and have the COVID pass to in order to, end, to get entry into any clubs um, but supposedly um, I've heard the rumour is that Bergheim is going to open up indoors in October so from October 1st they're going to be you know doing their programming that way indoors that's only a rumor I don't know if it's true um if you check out their programming now they're only showing stuff for the club garden at the moment which if I'm not mistaken holds about 500 people I don't know last time I went there it did look about a 500 person kind of venue but for the most part it's just um it's just uh the club the club garden now for the most part that you're seeing right now and um, they haven't really listened to anything else for any other month so maybe by the end of the month or, or the middle of the month we'll see what the program is for october and we'll get a better idea of what they're kind of doing but i've allegedly have been told october is definitely the month that they're going to reopen up indoors so and seeing as october is going to be uh, sober october for me in terms of doing the challenge that they do with um what's his face with Joe Rogan and them man I'm definitely going to try and head of head to go I'm definitely going to try and look to go um, the beginning of November if not I'll just hold out and try and go for the New Year's Eve at the beginning of January and just bang out and do the entire three days and see how I feel man it's going to be an absolute wild ride but I'm definitely looking forward to going it because I've got a pep back into my step that one is for sure